How do you please a woman in bed? You gotta eat this. You gotta eat her cat. In the yeah, all that. Simple as that. How do you please a woman in bed? You gotta eat this. You gotta eat her cat. In the yeah, all that. Simple as that. How do um. <laughs> <laughs> we all grown here. We all we all grown here. It's a lot of men running around here talking about nah, bad man no yam no poom poom. What you won't do, another guy will. I can't speak for everybody else. Let me let me not speak for everybody else. I've been nasty all my life. The only thing I won't do is let Jason love my wife. Yeah, I ain't let. I can't let no other man. Uh, redecorate my wife's insides. I ain't that freaky. Hi, I'm Kiko. I'm 23. Uh, I go to UCSB and I also bartend. My name is Optimus Prime. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say no. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kiko. I'm blowing the shit out. Why I'm blowing it out? Yo, why they do that? Why they why they do that, bro? Any man, and I've said this before, that is attracted to a trans woman is not gay. I lie. Any man, and I've said this before, that is attracted to a trans woman is not gay. I lie and tell the fuck. Hey, hey. hey. I don't care how well you make yourself up when the clothes come off and it's ding a ling swinging. A Batman vibes that. A purity Batman vibes that. Why, well, like, I don't want to get canceled. I don't want to say nothing crazy. But listen to me. If you're attracted to a man in a wig, you gay. You understand me? I don't care if they snip it, they clip it, they put it together and sew it. I don't care. Pop it, stop it, twist it. You know me. I remember that game. I don't care if they do any of that to that man dingling. That's still a man. Okay. So your body man. Mm. So the first question is, okay, all right, what is your ideal man's age range? 25 to 30. What is your ideal man's race? What do you want race? to Race? Yeah. Hispanic all the way. Dude, what's the minimal height you want your ideal man to be? Like 5'7". What's the minimal income you want your ideal man to be? She said 5'7". Seven. Seven. The chances of you finding your ideal man is 14.7% chance in the America. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Time out. I'm not going to lie. The fact that she said 5'7", shout out to you, sis. And then she even said the ideal income was $70,000 a year. That's actually pretty reasonable, to be quite honest. But the 5'7 part, that's still taller than me. I'm 5'6", for you. some of y'all who don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm vertically challenged. I don't give, you know, it is what it is. I'm vertically challenged. I don't care. You feel me? We the same height laying down. Interpret that how you want to interpret that. But uh, I was expecting her to say six foot, over six foot. Because for some strange reason, she be about three feet 11, but still want a man that's like 6'10". So I, I'm surprised she, excuse me, I'm surprised she said 5'7". Shout out to her. She seemed taller than five seven. She might have a little fetish. It's it's some women out here that got that fetish. They like they like dating shorter men. She might be one of those.
So this particular day, I get up, I get my daughter dressed, I catch the train. I decided to walk from the train station to a bus stop. I'm walking, I'm looking at my baby, she's in a stroller and she's facing me. It's like there's nobody outside. It's a beautiful day, the sun's shining. I hear some walking behind me. So when I turn around, it's this old ass lady. So she's like, hey. I'm like, hey, how you doing? She said, that's a beautiful baby. I done stopped so I can talk to this lady. She said, well, can I have her? I said, no. I said, that's my baby. Can she you said, have well, her? I think she'll be better off with me. I can oh. push out. She put her hand on my hand. A car. Just the curve at the bus stop. Run into the bus stop. If I hadn't stopped, I would have been standing at that bus stop with my baby. I turned around to look for the lady. The lady didn't disappear. A couple years later, I'm at my cousin's house and I'm going through some pictures. And I stumble upon this picture. In this picture is that same lady from the bus stop. So I'm talking about cousin. I say, hey, who is this? He said, that's your grandmother. That's your daddy mama. What? I ain't gonna lie. I don't be believing in ghost stories. I don't really be believing in the supernatural type of things I'm, I'm not one of those people but there is a story in my family and the crazy thing is everybody that was present during this event tells the story the same exact way my great grandmother was diabetic and um, they had to cut one of her legs off so she had a wooden stump and when she used to walk through the house you would know that she was you know she's going to the kitchen she was going to the living room you would hear it because you would hear her Drag on, she, she would drag on her foot, then you hit a stump. She would drag on her foot, she, you hit a stump, right? So basically, they said the night that they buried her, the whole community, not a whole community, but it was a, at least 20 people in the house. And everybody was drinking, having a good time laughing. And I, I think it was like either 11 o'clock at night or 1 in the morning. I think it was 1 in the morning. It was 1 in the morning. They heard the dragging of the foot and the stump. Dragging of the foot and the stump. And it scared the shit out of everybody in the house. Because they knew. Like they knew that that was her. Everybody tell the story the same way. From my aunts. To my grandmother. God, God rest her soul. To my other aunt. God rest her soul. To um, the people in, that was in the house that lived in the in our neighborhood. Everybody tell the story the same way. I think that's probably the only supernatural story I have pertaining to my family. I'm gonna ask you a question. If when you met me, I had four kids, would you have still mess with me? Nope, that's your four kids. <laughs> so now you're being really fake and corny and you're not really answering the question. Cause you said no? Be answering it. I if mean, I had four no. kids, when you- I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have been with you when you had four kids, no. So the amount of kids that somebody has changes the person that they are. No, but that's a lot of responsibility. So what? But if you love somebody, you take... I'm going to ask you a question. If when you met... I've been trying not to do a whole bunch of women bashing on my channel. Because... I've noticed that that is the direction that some of these videos is leading to. And we not about to create no incel type of situation over here. But some of these... I need to start like broadening my horizons on the, on the things I watch. Because it be a lot of bullshit popping up on my timeline, cuz. It be a lot of bull... Let me tell you, ladies, let me tell you something, okay? I'm not going to bash you for having four kids. I'm not going to bash you for having one or two. But you have to understand that taking care of kids is a huge responsibility. And if a man doesn't want to date you because you have four kids... I would pray that you understand. The one thing that I would say is, and I've been in that predicament before, where low-key, <laughs> the step-parent is pretty much asking the parent to pick them over the kids. 
I've been in that situation twice, to be quite honest with you. I try not to really talk about, like, my my upbringing and shit like that because I don't want to, I don't know, I don't want to say nothing crazy, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like disrespecting my parents or nothing like that. I've said shit about my moms and my stepfather, and, you know, but I've never really spoke about my pops and my upbringing with, with him and his wife. But what I would say, yo, if you find a man that's willing to, to take care of your kids like they're his own, you got to love that man. This is the question I would ask her. Would you rather you and this man dating, he say he accepts you and your four kids, but then during the relationship, he basically checks out. You know what I'm saying? He's angry all the time because he really not feeling your kids like that. He's not ready for the responsibility and he low-key takes his frustration out on your kids. And now your kids end up growing, your kids end up growing up with trauma. Because a lot of us grew up with childhood trauma, right? Or would you rather this man be honest to you and say, listen, I love you, but this is too much for me and I don't think I can handle it. And just leaves you alone because he doesn't want to, he knows that he's not ready for the responsibility of accepting you and your kids. Which one would you rather? At the end of the day, you should give that man credit for being honest. I'll never bash, like how they be bashing women for having a whole bunch of kids and not being able to keep a man and this, that, and the third. I'm not gonna do that. Because I do understand that shit happens. But let's not, let's not try to make men feel bad For making a choice based on what they're comfortable with. And she was finna get loud too. You heard her about to get loud with this man? <sighs> Jesus Christ.